Yo, 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 guess what? It's time for another lift ranking! We're gonna rank the lifts at all four Conwood Canyons resorts, but not individually, but as one big hole. So it's gonna be a mega ranking. How about that? What this means is that we'll have different chairlifts from the different resorts mixed in. So without further ado, there's twin steam lifts and rides, and this is every lift that Rain, Solitude, Alta, and Snowbird rent. 36, Rustler. It's just a real estate lift. It's only open for lodge guests, which kind of sucks because they're teasing you with two beginner lifts and a private lift. Big reason why this lift shouldn't be on the list, Lodge Toe and Snow Pine are sandwiching this one lift that doesn't even allow you to ride unless you're a guest at a lodge at a place only for skiers, back snowboarders, and alphabet includes snowboarders, oils, hey, what happened? Why do I smell like a fever? Come on, not you again! Well, 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 you thought you could escape me again, huh? You just got dragged in from Steamboat, and you're talking trash about Alta? Come on, bro. All love for just one lift. You know what? I'm gonna switch out with the buddy of mine if you do that kind of thing again, so be ready for it. Get out of my house. Let's move on. 35. Lodge Toe. A cool lift, but there's not much substance. You only use it to get to the lodge, and the run is flat. 34. Snow Pine. Another real estate lift, but thank you for making this chairlift public because sometimes the beginners could use a little warm up. 33. Albion. This chairlift does not run much because Sunnyside High Speed Triple was right next door, rendering this lift fairly useless and now even more useless when the new High Speed 6 comes in. 32. Explorer. It's kind of hard to not put beginner lifts towards the bottom of the list when they don't have much substance, but this one does its job really well as it's the only beginner lift at Brighton. Also, somebody hit the safety gate while we were riding the lift. 31. Link. Even though this is a beginner lift, it is a helpful transfer lift from the Moonbeam base to the Apex base. You don't have to ski anymore. 30. Chickadee. This feels like a great resting stop. And this is also home to the Alpine Slide and other fun stuff. So Chickadee's the place to go for the summer. 29. Transfer Toe. Finally, we're almost done with the so-called generic lifts. This lift is cool in that it's a rope toe and a platter lift at the same time. It's very easy to transition from Albion to Wildcat and vice versa. But this lift's not that great. It's kind of hard to get a strong grip on the rope, and when you do, it feels like your arms are going to be pulled right off. That's the only downside I have with this lift. But other than that, this is a cool transfer lift. 28. Moonbeam Express. Finally, we have our first normal skiing lift. Unfortunately, this one has some flaws like the other lifts I mentioned. I mean, sure, you can get to Powderhorn and the harder stuff from the top, but this lift mostly serves just flat terrain, especially at the top. It's not lower on the list just because it's a beginner lift, it's lower because it just feels boring, that's all. That was the Solitude Playground. Let's move on. 27. Crest Express. The required lift of Brighton. Even though it accesses more trails than Majestic, it's still annoying because coming down from Millicent leaves you no choice but to take the lift back up. Because of this, lines can get very long. And it doesn't help that Majestic sometimes sits idle every now and then, creating a huge bottleneck at the base. 26. Mineral Basin Express. I know this is definitely going to spark some debate, but hear me out on this. The terrain is good, and the lift runs at a great pace. So what's the elephant in the room? This lift is the only way out of the backside. Wah wah. This means on busy days, lines can get very long. I'd love to see them add more chairs to this lift or build a supplementary lift as this is a huge bottleneck for Snowbird. Mineral Basin does have potential, but it gets really annoying when everybody is forced to take one single lift out of the backside. 25. Will Beer. One of two beginner options at the bird. Bass Highway, Myers Road, and Will Beer Ridge are solid trail options. It's not really worth flapping because it's mostly just a transfer lift to get back to Snowbird Center, but other than that, it's a decent beginner lift. 24. Midgad. Unlike Gadzoom, and as the name implies, this lift only takes you midway up Gad Valley, stopping at the Midgad restaurant. There is a mid unload, 
but that station ends lower than Bass Highway, and Bass Highway is the run you would use to get back to the tram or Peruvian. I would only ride this lift to avoid the lines at Gatsu, and that's it. 23. Snake Creek Express. The good old Snake Creek. This list got some really great trailblazing runs such as Pioneer, Deer Park, Pine Mark, and if you want the challenge, Doyle's Dive. Doyle's Dive's got the moguls you want. But why is this lift so low on the list, you ask? Big reason? It slithers like a snake. Besides that, the terrain is great for trailblazing. 22. Majestic. The king of the terrain parks. This is the definition of a good backup. Because it's not a useless outlier, it actually has use underneath. While the terrain park is fun, the lift can run a bit slow at times. And it doesn't go all the way to the summit, so you're probably going to be missing out on a lot of awesome trails that are at the top of the Crest Express. But hey, this lift is perfect for avoiding the morning rush at Crest! 21. Sunrise. One of two out of base lifts in the Solitude Village. This lift's on the slower side, but the ride is relaxing. The way it goes into the trees and away from the rest of the mountain makes it feel secluded, and you can also access the summit lift from the top. However, there is a quicker way to get to Summit Express, and we'll get to that in a little bit. 20. Powderhorn the second. Muggle stashes. Blue cruisers. A relaxing ride. Do I need to say more? I know some have been saying, Oh, this should be a high-speed quad! But I think the ride time is just fine, frankly. I mean, if you look at it, it's only for intermediates and experts, so having it as a fixed grip kind of prevents beginners from getting onto it since they're mostly gravitated towards detachables. So yeah, this thing is cool. 19. Baby Thunder I like how this lift is in its own terrain pod, so you don't have to worry about big crowds. There are several great cruisers like Bluebell, Tiny Tiger, and if you want the challenge, Thunder Alley Through the Trees. One downside is that you can't access this lift from the Gap Valley base area without taking either Mid-Gad or Gadzoom. But other than that, this is still a solid lift. 18. Peruvian Tunnel This is not some sucky lane magic carpet. This one is something special. It's basically a museum, but way more fun since you're riding past them on a magic carpet. The unfortunate thing? It's lower than the summit, which means you have to ride the Mineral Basin chairlift if you wish to leave. 17. The one and only, Aerial Tram. This gets you from the Snowbird Center all the way up to Hidden Peak and Summit Restaurant and provides the best views at the top. There's nothing better than watching skiers drop in a mineral basin or the front side while enjoying an afternoon lunch. You have two awesome options from top to bottom skiing. You can stay on the front side or you can drop in a mineral basin. This is a great scenic ride, and I'm sure it'll provide fantastic views in the coming years. 16. Sunnyside Trace We're getting to some more interesting things in Alta. This one has some really fun cruisers, and a few tree glades. By far one of the most unique lifts out there. I'm so happy it is finding a new home at Red Lodge Mountain, Montana. The new six-pack likely won't change its placement since it's going to serve the same terrain in the exact same alignment. 15. Gadzoo. Our base option 1 provides access to most of Gad Valley. Why is this higher than Mineral Basin, you ask? The lines are nowhere near as bad. Well, except for the morning rush. You can also access Gad 2 and Little Cloud if you want the full experience of Gad Valley. However, it runs on the slow side and is sometimes prone to mechanical issues, so it's not as good as the other out of base lift in Snowbird, which we'll get to later. 14. Wildcat. The legendary powder stashes. Hey, was that where Al the Soulbright Bird was dumping snow on us? Possibly. Jokes aside, this is the king of advanced terrain at Alta. There are several gates where you can go through to get to Snowbird if you have the Alta Snowbird Pass or the Icon Pass, or you can ski down some fun cruisers to your heart's content. Just don't get stuck in the powder. The powder monkeys will get you. 13. Apex Express. This is the quicker way to get to some express from the Solitude Village base. 
Unlike Moonbeam, this one does not have any fly runouts. Hooray! Well, except at the bottom. It gets pretty steep near the top too. Oh, and what's really nice is that you can start and end your day at the Solitude Village base because you can access the Summit Express, and two, you can drop into the Powder Horn without having to take any boring beginner lifts. 12. Collins. Whoosh through the first stage, turn halfway, zoom through the forest, and then you're up the top, and it's woo! Windy. Sorry, that was really bad. To get the negative out of the way, since it's a key out of base lift, this lift gets hit with huge lines in certain parts of the day. It's nice that it gives you a second loading option if you want to lap the terrain off the Collins lift but not head back down to the bottom. 11. Eagle Express. This lift is a classic. It has a good mix of intermediate and advanced runs and it is tucked in its own little area of solitude. It is a bit slow and you can't really access it from the base without taking either Moonbeam or Apex but it's still an awesome lift regardless. 10. Little Cloud. Now we've made it to our top 10. Woo! Talk about some high winds at the high alpine of Snowbird. The best trail off this lift has to be Regulator Johnson. It is a fun cruiser. It's not too difficult, but it's definitely not too easy either, so that is the perfect balance for a Black Diamond. The only issue is that the lift is in avalanche territory, which usually results in Road to Provo being closed, but they definitely designed this lift with wind in mind. 9. Honeycomb Return Located in the heart of Honeycomb Canyon, this is one extremely steep lift. This is really only used for egress out of Honeycomb Canyon, and the runs are all double black, so it requires 3 lifts if you want to lap that particular area of solitude. 8. Great Western Express. One thing I really like about this terrain pod is that it does not have any flat sections. Hooray! This lift goes to the highest point of Brighton and it gives some of the best views, including towards Snowbird and Mineral Basin. There are some long lines every once in a while, but it is hardly a deal breaker since the lift runs relatively fast. In fact, this is the fastest detachable at Brighton considering how old it is. So Snake Creek, I'm looking at you buddy. 7. Sugarloaf. One of two high alpine lifts at Alta, this lift is fantastic. But watch out for powder monkeys, because if you ski on a powder day, you're gonna get stuck in one, and it's not gonna be fun. You can also take this lift to the Alta Bird Connector if you want to ski Alta and Snowbird at the same time, as long as you have an Icon Pass, and you're skiing. Other than that, this is a phenomenal lift. 6. Got 2. GAD2 is one of my favorite lifts at the bird. The lift runs really fast, and the terrain is really fun to lap. My favorite runs have to be Basakwards and Bananas, because they're not too flat, but they're also not too mogul-y. They are just right. I really like that this lift has its own terrain pod, which means you can take quicker laps, and it's not going to be as crowded as, like, GADZOOM. Well, except for after a storm. Regardless, if you do go to Snowbird, I would check out the GAD2 area. 5. Millie Express. Brighton's own separate terrain pod is also their best. The lift runs at a decently fast pace and serves some awesome lappable terrain. This is one of two lifts that accesses the Soul Bright connector if you want to ski both Brighton and Solitude at the same time. Millie is a fantastic lift, but these next few lifts are even better. 4. Baldy Express. This lift serves similar terrain to GAD2, but this time it's on the backside, so it gives you a more high alpine feel. It's also the lift you use to get to the Alta Bird connector if you have the Icon Pass and want to ski Alta and Snowbird at the same time, assuming that you're skiing. The only thing I'm not super crazy about is the speed. The lift runs kinda slow, but that doesn't really take away from the lapping experience. In addition to beginner and intermediate runs, you can also hike to the top of Mount Baldy for more advanced and difficult runs. 3. The Good Old Supreme This lift has fantastic trails like Big Dipper, Rock and Roll, and if you want some trailblazing, Three Bears. Three Bears has got all the trees you want. Plus, the lift runs at a rapid pace. We still have a couple more lifts remaining, but this is top notch. 2. Peruvian Express 
This is another one of those lifts where the lift is long, but the terrain is really good. Long and luscious is how I would describe this one. Spotlight of the show? Chips run, baby! Oh, and there's also Lower Silver Fox if you want a challenge. It's full of moguls. The lift is a roller coaster with several ups and downs. It also runs very close to the tram, so no waiting in line for that. But with that said, we got one more left to go. Let's see what it is. 1. Summit Express. Take everything we said about Peruvian Express and bump it up a notch. There's an extremely steep downhill midway through, and the terrain is absolutely fantabulous. Woodlawn has to be my favorite trail because I like how it starts out in the high alpine and then it goes deep into the woods of Honeycomb Canyon. And it's long too. Besides Woodlawn, Dynamite is also phenomenal. You can also access the Soul Bright connector if you want to ski both Solitude and Brighton at the same time. This is not only the best ski lift in all of the Cottonwood Canyons resorts, but it's also one of the best ski lifts, period. Solitude without a doubt has got a winner on their hands. Woo! That was a long video! One thing I would like to mention about Woodlawn, while the entire run is very fun, there's only one downside I have with it. After you pass the Honeycomb Return Lift, the run gets flat near the bottom. And it stays that way until you get to the Eagle Express. It's pretty much an anticlimactic ending. Other than that super fun trail, I would highly recommend it. But before I end this video, I bet you guys want to know what our favorite Conwood Canyon ski areas are in order. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'll show you our list as we finish off. If you enjoyed this video, give this a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you guys again very very soon. Bye!